Hey guys, this is Suzanne with RageAndApathy.com, and I'm here with Sean from one of my new favorite uh, DIY bands, Symphinity. Sean, how's it going? It's going great. That's great. Glad to hear it. Hey, a couple quick shots before we get into the uh, the interview here. Uh, current favorite band? Um, I'm, I'd have to say Revamp. <laughs> Gotta love Floor. Tell you what, Floor might actually get me to start listening to Nightwish again. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I really hope that she stays out of Nightwish, so that way she focuses on her thing. Um, favorite song? Um, in general? In general. In general? Oh, man. I, I have no idea. That's. I, I know. That's, that's always a tough question for mine, too. Favorite concert? What is your favorite gig? Favorite concert? My favorite personal gig or gig that i saw either probably my favorite one i saw was with them temptation opening for lacuna coil oh uh, now i'm jealous go ahead <laughs> <laughs> that was probably my favorite awesome awesome and uh favorite song of yours i'm still attached to my hidden manner honestly <laughs> oh awesome awesome tune yeah. um and okay this is a tough one for most people what is your least favorite song that you wrote my least favorite song that I wrote. Yes. It's probably not anywhere online that anyone could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's chickening out there, Sean. That's just that's that's being. Um, why, why would I release something I hate? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I I just I know every now and again I listen to a song, and I think to myself. They couldn't possibly have liked that before they sent it out into the world. I, 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 I know that feeling. Favorite gig moment of yours? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it's fresh in my mind, but we just played a really awesome gig in New Hampshire. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. That, that was just a really, really fun thing to do, you know, with mm -hmm. blazing wind at about, you know, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> We're on stage in a gazebo outdoors. Cool. That could be interesting. <laughs> Driving it, was, wind. it was just a really fun experience, you know, just to rock out in conditions that you're not used to. That's cool. Did any of your yeah. gear get soaking wet? No, it was actually okay. It wasn't raining too much, so. Good, good, We're actually good, good yeah. <laughs> All right, so how did you get started in, in, in music? How did you, what started the, the road to your, uh, your musical career? Probably taking piano lessons when I was six years old. Hmm, that's funny. I avoided piano lessons when I was six years old. Um, <laughs> and you, you've come up with this, obviously, uh, we're both into the symphonic metal, which, yeah. uh, you know, is how we actually hooked up here on Twitter. But um, how did you get the band together? What did you, did you do the, the, the Craigslist thing? Did you just find people around school? How did you throw the band together? Uh, well, I've thrown the band together several times, honestly. <laughs> Um, oh, don't we so, all know that feeling? So, so, so which, which, which version of the band are we talking about? Let's, let's go with the current incarnation of the band. The current incarnation is, uh, I guess, well, I went to NYU for my second master's degree. Okay. So there's a couple of us from there. Our new bassist is from NYU. Our pianist is from NYU. The other two I found on Craigslist. Yeah. Of all places. Yeah. Which never happens. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's 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 very. I've been through the Craigslist thing. It's very very difficult to find reliable band members. So where did you get the name for the band? How did you how did you come up with that? Is that something that you've been, um, you know, working on for a while? Is it something that just you know, yeah that that took a while actually. I mean, we there's different versions of the band that you know we we're always discussing what kind of name we could have, and uh, we were kind of talking about wouldn't it be cool to like you know kind of imply symphony, but you know, have something, some sort of spin on that. Mm -hmm. And I was just laying in bed one night, and it just kind of popped into my head the synthesis of symphony and infinity. That is awesome. I'll tell you what, it's it's it is one of the cooler names I've heard in a while, and it's it's um, it's kind of funny because most really cool names are already taken. I've I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it that's why it took so long. I mean, I I spent years finding this. Okay. It, it wasn't. It wasn't obvious. Now you had a lot of really cool stuff. I found uh, as I was listening to uh, Intangible Dreams this morning, which I picked up off of iTunes. Um, 
I, I found myself drawn into the orchestration that you had on there. It's it's probably some of the best orchestration I've heard, particularly from, from D, DIY or indie musicians for a while. I mean, obviously, when you get up to the level of, of revamp or Tardia or, or any of the you know other bands we've talked about over the last few days, you know, they can afford to, to fly out to, to California and, and they can afford to hire the best uh, orchestrators and, and arrangers oh, yeah. that money yeah. can buy. I mean- Nightwish Pip Williams, he's great, you know. Mm-hmm. He, he practically is. co-writes the songs. <laughs> he's 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 absolutely awesome. And yeah. I I was just I was pleasantly surprised when I listened to your stuff and I was like, "Wow, that is some awesome orchestration." So, where do you come up with the the main themes for your music? Cuz some of it was uh I I mean, I know the symphonic metal thing always goes back to classical, but some of it was so uh I'm going to go Beethoven. You know, so yeah. Beethoven, like with with the way you you weave the voices in in together, where do yeah. you come up with that? Do you just sit around and you know headbang to Beethoven all day and then say, oh, I, hey, I, wish I, I think did. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, I, I I guess I should kind of start with the beginning here. When when I moved to New York City, I went to grad school at the City College of New York, where I studied with David Del Tredici and I uh, learned orchestration. And as I was learning that, and as I was I was writing classical music with for full orchestra. Mm-hmm. Um, as I was doing that, I sort of realized that this was something I could do. I could actually orchestrate rock songs. So I really started with the bare bones rock songs since rock was already a kind of a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. I had already been writing songs and I just decided to sort of fuse the two worlds together since I figured, well, this is everything I do. So let's make something unique that mm-hmm. is something that I can specialize in. That is awesome. Um, who does, I, I'm assuming you do most of the songwriting. You write the lyrics as well? I do. I, I write all of it. Okay. So, lyrics first or music first? Uh, well, that, that's where it gets interesting. Usually, in the past, it's been music first, because I'm first and foremost a composer, mm-hmm. and melodies just come to me all the time. Lyrics have always been much harder. Um, but I can tell you that from a songwriting standpoint, it's so much harder to write songs that way. <laughs> Once you already have music, <laughs> you have to kind of, you know, put the puzzle together and actually fit the lyrics in. Oh, I'm fat finding that out. Yeah. I, I think uh, we were tweeting the other day and I said, you know, I, I figured out that I, I actually have to lengthen a song. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, the song I have to lengthen ended up being about nine minutes. So. <laughs> hey, we, we like Prague, so. You know. I do like Prague. I still like my Prague. I, I wish, I wish Prague would go through another revival and get some new and interesting bands in it. Um, <laughs> so but yeah, I mean, uh, with the newer album uh, that's coming out, hopefully, hopefully this year, um, I mostly did lyrics first. Mm-hmm. I kind of, I've kind of switched gears, and I've. I've since I know that I can come up with, with a melody for pretty much anything at this point, mm-hmm. it, it's it's so much easier to come up with words first and then do the music because the music will come naturally to me once I have a hook in mind. Cool. Very cool. Um, how do you keep the music new? And I mean, I was listening to, uh, to Intangible Dreams, which, again, is available on iTunes, and uh, a lot of what... I was listening to. There seemed to be almost, almost a Middle Eastern theme kind of going through there, on a couple of pieces. On how, a couple, yeah. How how do you keep your your stuff fresh? Where do you get your new ideas from? Well, in writing Intangible Dreams, for instance, uh, a lot of that was you know, kind of as I was experimenting with rock music. Um, I was learning how to play guitar, for instance. I would want to teach myself new things so if i wanted to learn a new, new technique i would just you know write a song with it so and sort of continuing with that um with with the newer songs and things like that um i sort of try to improve myself in different ways so i try to i, I like doing things that are new so if there's something I haven't done before, I, I try to incorporate that, but have it not be something that no one's heard before. Hmm, very cool. Very cool. Um, favorite classical piece. What is your all-time favorite classical piece? 
Oh man, that, that's tough. <laughs> I know. Um. <laughs> I, I can tell you, my mother uh, just asked me to do an arrangement of Claire de Lune on the guitar, and that is no longer my favorite classical piece, because, wow, my fingers are hurting after some of those stretches. Yeah. So. That, that, I mean, it's, isn't it hard enough on piano? <laughs> As You know, I wouldn't know. Ironically enough, I started to play piano when I was six. That didn't go very well. So... Everything I do on piano, I'm kind of self-taught. Right. Um, for years and years, my friends mocked me as, as the right-hand queen. I could play anything with the right hand as long as the left hand was sequenced. <laughs> so, now, I know we already kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, who are your major influences? I know I know we got Floor. Floor is Actually, awesome. That's the funny thing. She actually isn't an influence of mine because I wrote all this music before I even discovered After Forever and Revamp. Cool. So she actually isn't an influence of mine at all. Um, however, <laughs> I I did listen to Epica, and I've been an Epica fan for a while. And that's sort of a spinoff group, so... Yeah, you know, Simone Simons is uh, another one of those that could, uh, you know, she could sneeze and I'd buy it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> Pretty darn amazing. Yeah. Um, now we I mean, were... that Nightwish, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. With, I mean, there's another band that that with really lavish orchestration. That they're more of a movie score sort of sound than we are. Mm -hmm. I try to. I what I try to do is I I don't really want to sound like a movie score. I want to you know have the orchestra be being rocking out with us. That's kind of the way I write the orchestra parts. Mm -hmm. I know we talked a little bit about Nightwish, and I came into Nightwish. Um, the back end. I actually, I actually found Taria first, and then got into Nightwish, which I think is the the exact opposite of everyone else in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hey, your solo stuff's pretty good. So. You know, I am actually looking forward. If I may diverge for a moment, uh, what I'm hearing about the new album is that it's a lot more experimental, yeah. which I am very excited to hear about. Um. I did actually like the video version of uh, Never Enough much better than I liked the Act 1 version. Um, although it still just kind of sounds like parts of it were an afterthought. But I I'm yeah. looking forward to this one. Um, when was the last time you had to replace a band member? I know we started kind of talking to you about the uh, <laughs> various incarnations of, of bands. <laughs> I'd, I'd say like last week, you know. <laughs> haven't we all had that problem <laughs> that's an exaggeration it feels like last week but you know maybe a couple maybe like maybe like a month ago i mean we've had some some time to actually you know train our new bassist and stuff like that well, and that's we, good. We have, yeah and we're we have a new drummer now too so awesome awesome so it's uh so basically you are left as the original member of the band that's correct <laughs> yes 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 i'm sure we all know that well um, um we yeah, it's sort of, yeah, it's sort of like an Amy Lee sort of thing here. <laughs> <laughs> the band um, has changed, but I'm still the same. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, now, how has you you've just gotten a new drummer? You've just gotten a new bassist. How do you find kind of the interpersonal dynamics evolving and changing as you guys as you guys work together and and you know create this music together? Well, I think it's it's good. You know, we we're sort of arriving at a place where we all want to do this. Everyone who's involved is kind of on the same page. So mm -hmm. it seems like things are flowing better than they ever have. So um, now, do you guys have? Are you guys on an actual tour, or you're just kind of doing day shots to here and day shots to there? Because I know I was talking yeah, to yeah, that, that, that's what we're doing. I mean, kind of whatever. Whatever we can book that makes sense. And I know uh, one of the other uh, DIY bands that I'm that I'm in touch with, Fabian, from out in California. They actually just got on Indiegogo to uh, fund a tour. Is that something you guys are, are looking to do, or are you looking to? Uh... We are looking to fund. We're looking to fund our album, our upcoming album. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. If we have leftovers, then maybe we'll go touring with it, but. <laughs> Okay, and how much um, how much are you guys looking to grab for the new album? Uh, we're I'm estimating eight thousand at this point. Estimating eight thousand is that yeah. for 
recording, mixing, mastering, everything? Yeah, or... I mean, we have a 50-piece orchestra at this album, so mm -hmm. it's a lot to cover. It is. That's a lot to write for. It, well, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Uh... I, I have, you know, visions of, of uh, the days before Gutenberg invented his printing press that, uh, you know, some, some little guy sitting there copying 300 pieces of music over and over and over again. Yeah, Mozart uh, never would have done this. <laughs> no, he, he, he wouldn't have. Uh, he would have liked doing this, but... He would have. Um, instruments, equipment, are you a brand loyalist or will you play with whatever you have available? I mean, I, I I usually play with whatever's around, but um, I, I do love my Dean guitar, I have to say. I did. I like some of the stuff Dean's coming out with, too. I actually have a uh, Dean Dimebag amp sitting right next to me that I, you know, all of my friends were like, what? You? Dimebag? No. <laughs> and uh, I actually really like the tone. It's a, it's a great little amp. Dean's been doing a lot of really cool stuff lately. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, well, playing gigs in like New York City, I mean, you're you're used to bars and stuff having like their own amps, so mm -hmm. you don't really get attached to a sound so um, much, unfortunately. How do you feel about all the 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 neato toys that we're get we're getting now? As uh, I know, guitarists, I can I can plug into my iPad, I can plug into my phone, I can record I, wherever I am. I I think it's cool. <laughs> It's awesome. I, I do have to fight my students, though, and make sure that they're not using it during lessons. Um, <laughs> and anything, you can, anything we can do to make life, life easier for musicians is, you know, because it's, it's hard enough already. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, so, um, what has the biggest challenge been as a band, other than to, you know, keep band members? <laughs> I mean, that's been a challenge. Um I'd say just finding the right shows to play, because mm -hmm. um, so many of them are the wrong shows to play. Right. Oh, uh, especially in New York, it's it's tough to bring out audiences here. It's uh, we we play anywhere but New York, and you know we're playing to a packed house probably. <laughs> that's that's and you know I I have a couple of friends in New York, as you can imagine, me being a musician and all. Um, yep. and they said that they started hearing, uh, you know, yeah, you can play, but we're not paying you. Have you, have you heard a lot of that when you try and book gigs in the city? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of an understood thing. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't really talk about it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you are, you're, you're just not going to get paid. <laughs> All right. And, unless you're a college band that has 50, 60 friends that regularly come to your shows, you're, right. you're just not going to get paid. Uh, and how have you noticed your uh, music evolving since you first started writing and playing and, you know, to what you're, you're writing now? Uh, well, it's gotten heavier, I would say. Uh, the, the newer songs are definitely heavier. Uh, I got more of a new metal vibe going on, more of a, in some instances, more prog, too. Um. And, and more just metal in general. It's it's a lot heavier. You know, I knew you. I liked you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. you know, at the same time, it's uh, a lot of the writing is more pop style, mm -hmm. uh, especially in terms of lyrics. I try to write things that are more relatable. I know it's, it's funny because I know my taste has actually gotten a lot harder as I've gone older and uh, all of my friends are mellowing out. So it's it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I, I plan on just getting heavier and heavier <laughs> as time goes on. <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, the business end of things. Who runs the business end of things? You guys do that all by yourself, or do you do that all by yourself? Yeah, I, I mostly take care of that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay, so, and, and I know, obviously, you're great at keeping in touch with the fans, because we, uh, we connected online the other day. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm always on Twitter, so. <laughs> always on Twitter? Twitter is great. I love Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's a great resource for it's nice because you know you can talk to your fans so easily on there. And and I I'm I'm not a huge Facebook fan, but I'm I'm getting there. But Twitter is I've never been a Facebook fan. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter is just so nice. You can get on there, you can go uh back and forth with uh you know, in, in my case I I love following the uh I don't know that indie bands is the right word, but the DIY guys like you 
who yeah. are who are trying to do it, and you you you're using all these technological tools that we have at our disposal right now to to make things happen, and that's that's a real inspiration for those of us who are still struggling through writing an actual whole album. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, any uh, are you are you aiming to ever get? onto you know like a record label do you intend to stay diy are you looking to go indie what's what are your I'm, long-term plans here i'm looking to get us on the road <laughs> and get us touring in front of big audiences and, and you know and i i want us to you know whatever seems to make sense at the time whatever promotes that goal next year next year's so, prog power we're gonna see you in prog power next year i i don't know maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if, if a label, you know, serves that goal for us, then that's great. If, if it's a deal that isn't going to work for us, then, you know, I'll, I'll just stay indie for the next 20 years. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, the last two questions, uh, actually, I guess maybe the last three, um, shout outs. Do you have any shout outs out for, uh, you know, people who have supported you through the years or, uh, anything of that nature? All our fans on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. And um, <clears throat> any, how can fans get into the music? How can it, where can we send people to, uh, you know, to, to listen to some of your stuff? I mean, we're pretty much everywhere. We're, what, what site aren't we on at this point? <laughs> so you're on Twitter. You've got uh, Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation, Facebook, SoundCloud, Bandcamp. Um, MySpace, if anyone cares. <laughs> uh, you know, I found a couple <laughs> bands this morning that only do MySpace, and I was shocked. What, what century is this? <laughs> I, I Well, <laughs> my thought is MySpace has made it so hard to listen to stuff. You know, I, I click on, yes, I want to listen, then it pops open another window, then I have to go to that yep. window... And, like and then it directs you to something completely different once you're done listening. Yeah, and it's just... Yeah. So I'm, I'm not a huge fan of MySpace. Yeah, not, no, not they really fan. shot themselves in the foot. I, I don't really know who uh, did that. <laughs> so I love SoundCloud. So we can hook you get... So we can we can definitely hook up on SoundCloud. Run there. And yeah. uh, what's coming up soon other than the album? Anything cool? Any any tour dates that you have planned? Any other... Any surprises that, that we need to know about or keep our eyes peeled for? We, we do. We're trying to book some East Coast dates. Uh, we've got a couple already. Um, we're playing in Pennsylvania next month. Oh, cool. How close to Pittsburgh? Um, Pottsville. It's kind of middle of nowhere. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's, uh, <laughs> it's more toward the Philadelphia side of the state, but it's... Uh, it's uh, yeah, there's nothing there. You're, you're going to have to like pull over and ask a cow for directions out yeah. in Pottsville. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll be in Tom's River, New Jersey again in August. We were just there last month, so. Now, your touring bit, how many pieces are you, uh, do you tour with? You, you know, it's whoever comes along. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's going to hop in the rig and And, and, and drive. <laughs> gotcha. All right, any last words? Um... Thank you so much for doing this. This is this is a lot of fun. Oh, no problem. I was um, I can't wait to. Uh, I'm actually uh, this is the first of the band interviews. I'm hoping to get a lot more band interviews because it's just so much fun. It's so much fun seeing where people come from with their ideas and and uh, you know who knows might even get to, get to listen to some cool music along the way and so yeah it was fun for me. I really appreciate because I know um, we did this on extremely short notice. So yeah. I uh, I appreciate you being available and uh, and awake. Hey, you know I'm awake. That's a little awake. Bad. Awake Barely. is good. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. And uh, you're welcome. Yeah, and we will hopefully. Uh, I don't think I'll get out to Pottsville, but uh, who knows? I have some friends in New York, so maybe one of these days I'll, I'll see you in in uh, New York or New Jersey. That's great. All right, sounds great. Thank you so much, Sean. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.